together many years ago. Now Royal Commentator, author and broadcaster. Ten after seven is the time. Let's bring into the conversation now Dr. David Weary, the Senior Teaching Fellow at the Politics Department at SOAS, University of London, and has conducted research on this area. And if I can, uh, Dr. Weary, the same question, is the Royal Family a racist family, Doctor? Morning.
putting the royal family into disrepute. Dina, lastly, to those who would say, and the royal family have said they would address it privately, to those who would say, respectfully, we don't believe that. We, we need to see more openness here that you have actually dealt with it or are in the process of dealing with it, that you can't just deal with it behind closed doors. How would you respond? I think um, they need to have the royal spokesman to give um, brief responses to the situation and the Queen has said enough. She said that they're dealing with it and it's a private matter. Dina, thank you. Have yourself a good weekend. We'll return to this conversation about it. She'll be the next one, but let's pick up on that story that I'm really not allowed to tell you as much about as I choose to, but we'll try and examine exactly why in the next hour. A Metropolitan Police Officer continues to be questioned on suspicion of murder and kidnapping after human remains have been found in the search of Sarah Everard and indeed more has been found in the search into that particular police officer. Details now, LBC's Alex Stovanovich in Ashford, Kent. Alex. Yes, Scotland Yard is to be investigated over its handling of an allegation of indecent exposure against the officer suspected of murdering Sarah Everard. Now, the police watchdog is going to consider if the Met responded appropriately to the alleged incident. The IOPC, as the Independent Office for Police Conduct, says it started an investigation after receiving five referrals from the Met in relation to its handling of this case. And the watchdog is going to examine how officers responded after receiving a report that a man had exposed himself at a fast food restaurant in South London on the 28th of February, three days before Ms. Everard's disappearance. Now, the other referrals were over the arrest of a serving officer on suspicion of both kidnap and murder, the Met's actions after Ms. Everard was reported missing, and the head injury of the suspect sustained while in custody. So these are the main areas being followed up by the IOPC. Now, I'm, I'm here at the scene of where human remains were found on Wednesday by Woodland near Ashford on this country lane, which is still cordoned off. Detectives have still not yet been able to confirm the identity of the remains. Officers and police vans remain at the scene here. Flowers have also been laid. The family of Sarah have released a statement. And in it, they say Sarah brought so much joy to our lives, adding that she always put others first and had the most amazing sense of humor. She was bright and beautiful, a wonderful daughter and sister, kind and thoughtful, caring and dependable. They appeal for more information, asking for help to solve this terrible crime, appealing for witnesses to come forward. Now, the MP for North Fannett in Kent, Sir Roger Gale, says he's thinking of the family right now. First of all, this is desperately sad. It is the most appalling crime and a complete betrayal from the side of it of a very considerable trust and our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers have to go out to the family and the friends who knew her. We've also been speaking with a sexual assault survivor who helped set up a service to get people home safely. Alice Leverton says this shouldn't just be an issue of concern for women. Men in general need to start stepping up. They need to have the conversations between themselves about how their ingrained behaviours are affecting other people. Well, detectives have been given more time to question the police officer, a man in his 40s. Another suspect in this case, a woman in her 30s, who was arrested at the same time on suspicion of assisting an offender, has been released on bail. Kent police are also assisting the Met with their investigations. And the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has said that concerns have been compounded by the fact the man arrested was a certain officer, but said the vast majority of police personnel were people of the highest integrity. Alex Stavanovich reporting coming up after the news. Babish, let's talk about the royal family. We'll do it after the news to give you more time. We'll also talk about loan charge. While the sums of money that the people are being demanded from HMRC are dizzying or eye-watering, surely the biggest number should be seven. Seven people who reportedly have taken their lives as they've been caught up in this loan charge scandal. We'll speak with one the victim. HMRC have handed me a £200,000 bill as a result of the loan charge. I'm Niall Finucane and I'll be telling you the impact this is having on my life. So we'll hear more from Mr Finucane after the news. We will also tell you more about that front page on the Financial Times. EU vaccine woes deepen, clouds gather over AstraZeneca supplies. Maybe Brussels shouldn't have lied about exactly what the UK was trying to do with the supply. 7.31, you're listening to Breakfast with me, Nick Ferrari on LBC, the news and Simon Conley. The police watchdog is investigating Scotland Yard over whether it properly investigated a claim of indecent exposure involving the suspect in Sarah Everard's murder. The serving Met officer is still in custody over the 33-year-old's disappearance. He's also being questioned over a separate allegation relating to three days before she went missing in South London. New figures show the UK's economy contracted by 2.9% in 
January as the current lockdown measures hit output. It compares to growth of 1.2% in December. The stay-at-home message in Wales will be replaced with a stay-local requirement from tomorrow. Four people from two households will also be able to meet outdoors to socialise. And from Monday, Welsh hairdressers can reopen with appointments. The weather, windy with sunny spells and blustery showers, which could be wintry on higher ground in the north, feeling cold for most, a high of 10 degrees. Enzymes. Well Bio from Vitabiotics, the UK's number one vitamin company.